Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. You're watching Yellow Hammer Woodcrafts and happy election day. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about how I built my Rikon MIDI lathe stand. It's just a couple of plywood scraps and some trim. That's all there is to it. I have mine screwed to the wall, so you might wanna consider that if you're building one like this because it's not very heavy. If you are gonna build a lathe stand, you want it pretty heavy because if it's not, the lathe will shake when you put a big chunk of wood on it. So let's get started. So yeah, this lay stands all three quarter inch scrap and you're gonna see me cutting the top. The top size is gonna depend on how big your lathe is. So measure your lathe and then draw out your dimensions for what you need. So as you can see, this lathe stand's not going anywhere. I have mine secured to the wall and that's because I know I'm not gonna need to move mine. Uh, this one's pretty light. So if you're building a lathe stand that you're gonna move around and put wheels on, you wanna make it a little bit heavier than this because if you don't, it's gonna vibrate and shake and rattle and all that stuff. So when you put a big chunk of wood here and it starts spinning, it's gonna start moving. And you're not gonna be able to turn it right. So you want a heavy lathe stand. I just didn't build a heavy one because I know mine's screwed to the wall. So you might wanna consider that. So you see me drilling some pocket holes. This whole thing's pretty much constructed with pocket holes. That's how I did my shelves. You don't have to do them like that. You could do dados. You could put brads on the side with glue. And as you can see, I added some trim just to cover up the plywood. You don't have to do that either. It's just something I wanted to do. I built this little shelf for my sandpaper for sanding pens and stuff. And then this piece, I did not film me adding this, but this is just extra support, uh, back brace to keep it from racking. So basically all it is is this tower, which you'll see me building in the video, and then this side piece, and then it is screwed to the wall. You can't see that, but it's got about six or seven screws in it. And then this is just trim from Home Depot put around it. These side pieces are cut at four inches wide. You'll see me putting that together in the video. And that's it, that's really all there is to it. And I just added this to hang my, hang my face shield on. If you're building this tower like you see me building it in the video with pocket holes, you're gonna need either one of these to get in there or you can use one of these. If you don't have one of those, it's really gonna be hard to get your drill in there to drill the pocket holes together. So if you don't have one, I would consider just uh, glue in the sides and putting brad nails in the side. I didn't do that because I didn't want the nails to show, but you could always cover them up with some wood putty. So how do you know how high to build your stand? Okay, so the best way I know to do it, I'm new to the lathe, so I had to look this up, but the best way to do it is to stand in front of the lathe, put your hand out at a 90 degree angle where your elbow's against your side, and that's where you want to be turning at. So you want your fingertips to be at the center of this headstock and tailstock. So I measured my lathe is 14 inches from the bottom to the center. And if I stand up against the wall and put my fingertips on the wall like this, I can make a mark right there. And then I'll subtract 14 inches from that measurement, which for me is 43 inches. So I'll subtract 14 from 43 and that's how high I'll make my stand. And that's gonna be different for everyone because it depends on how tall you are. So now you're seeing me screw the tower into the top, turning it over and screwing it into the wall. Like I said, you don't have to screw yours to the wall. I'm just doing this because I know I'm not gonna be moving mine around, so it's gonna stay right here all the time. This just keeps it secure. And the panel that I'm putting on the side down here, that's um, that piece that I was talking about earlier. So you want to measure how high you need that, cut that, put that on from the side. I've just got screws over here where I screwed it in. And then the back piece to help it from racking. So there it is all finished with the new Rikon lathe on it. Hey guys, there's nothing to it but to just get up, get out there and build something. But stick around one second. I got a sneak peek preview of the next video. Hey, I hope you got something out of this video. We just hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel. So thank you so much for the support. 
I still need 2,000 more watch hours to be monetized. So please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave me a comment. Share my videos with your friends. Share them on Facebook. We really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next video. The next video is going to be for this flip cart that has the planer and the joiner that you can flip around and five drawers on the right side. Let me show you that real quick. So this is the new flip cart that will be coming out pretty soon. If you watch Drew Fisher on Fisher Shop, you'll see that this design came from him. And this other side with the drawers was my design. And the back side with the inset right there, I'm gonna put clamps on. That came from Matt at 731 Woodworks. If you're not following him and Drew, what are you doing? Because they are awesome. Go follow them. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.